Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Live from Podville Media in Washington, D.C. and around the world, you're listening to The Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome to the party, and please join us along with our friends in great places like Wormleysburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, Wormleys. L- Loomis, California. Uh, Stevensville, not Stevensville. I lived in a Stevensville. Right, this is different. Uh, this is Stevensville, Stevenville, Texas. I'll mess that up every day because I live there. Okay. Seaside Heights, New Jersey. You know that area? Very I much assume? so. Very much so. My dad grew up in the Seaside area, and Seaside Heights is where one of the uh, Jersey, Shore? Jersey Shore episodes yeah. was set. Yeah. Sapporo, Japan. They had an Olympics there. I know that one. Beer. And uh, Samarkand, Uzbekistan. We're killing it in uh, Uzbekistan, Mike. That's uh, exciting. Rob sent me a tape, and I was, I can't, I've lost it. You've lost it? it? I lost it. I was so excited. I have it if you'd like to hear it. No, no, no. You're, no, let me find it. I want to find it. He wrote it. It's important. He wants to play it. Uh, Yeah. It's it's a great tape. I can't wait to hear it. Those are a lot of cities, and we just don't know where, uh, you know. (laughs) Where anybody is. I'm over here now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Are you in Wormleysburg, uh, Pennsylvania? I'm over here now. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes he, you know, he's always retro, right? One, oh, that's great. Only, I love it. But retro sometimes works it's for funny. me. It takes you right that back, doesn't it? Made my morning. I'm yeah. over here now. That, uh, What's that from? That is from uh, Andrew Dice. Clay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes yeah. when he'd be doing a routine on his stage show, he would change topics. And yes. if he lost the audience, he'd say, I'm over here now. <laughs> Rob's Rob's working on about one every two weeks that I get, but uh, yeah. on Fox. But they're working for me, and I know what's not working for me is the way I have that balance. And also, yeah. we had a game uh, many years ago on the Don and Mike show called uh, "Where's Dude," mm-hmm. and it was when we were laughing very much about "I'm over here now," and we recorded "Dude" saying "I'm over here now," and we would either you'd guess is "Dude" in front of me or to my left or my right, and then there would be "Dude" in stereo, yes. and we'd choose when. An engineer pulled me aside and said, you realize we broadcast in mono to extend our signal. (laughs) Do we still do that? Do we still broadcast in mono? Well, on WJFK? WJFK, I'm sure they do. do, do, Is the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. No, no. Well, we could put it in stereo, but it would have diminishing returns. It'd be pointless. And it doubles the size of the I'm over here now. So I can't do that. We can't play (laughs) Where's a Dice. I'm sorry. (laughs) But it was a whole like 25 minute game that had no reason whatsoever. This dude was always in the center. Yeah, but you thought you did. Yeah, I thought it was pretty pretty smart. Well, I mean, engineers, (laughs) they think we're so dumb sometimes that, like, Well, they're not going to understand mono. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with that. Right? I agree. Yeah, Mm -hmm. engineers are a different breed, but they, I think, the disdain and uh, perception, which is legitimate, by the way, when you're dealing with with air personalities that are that we have a a lower intellectual capacity. Some engineers were really bad about it, and then, like Dan Rison, wasn't bad. Dan Rison was a nice fellow. No, but the, the guy the, that's no longer with us was a little Oh, wrong. the worst. The he worst. We were, he thought we were dummies. Yeah, yeah. He, but, he, but, he, but the thing is, once again, I have to say, he's right. Well, because yeah. we are dummies. Disc Which, jockeys are dumb. Uh, no, you don't need to emphasize there it. There was a level. I, there were many times where, and it's not just, look, I think this is from market to market to market. They're not paid enough. They have to put up with a bunch of stuff. They, don't, they have wild hours. They're blamed for everything. But. The simple things, like, why is this laptop not working? And they look at you like, you're crazy? Yep. And you're like, I don't administer this laptop. <laughs> it was just here when I sat down. Right. I don't have the master password because you don't trust us, so I can't fix anything. I, I'll bring in my own, but you tell me I can't bring in my own. Right. Because it's not, you know, it's not CBS property. That was, a lot of that was garbage. And almost all of the... Uh Engineers I work with were reasonably intelligent guys. They yeah, were, yeah, you know, yeah, there, yeah. there was, uh, you know, there, you know, there were oh, autocorrect. You know what I was sending? I was sending. Oh, you're going to text something? Just uh, disregard it, please. 
Um, no, we well, got, now look, I got to look I got at a it. Text. Look, yeah, look, look at this. I'm over here now. Yes, yes, yes. All right. <laughs> what is that even supposed to be? I know. <laughs> I, you know what? What is the deal? Seriously. It's like, a, I hope you don't Venmo people the wrong number. No, it doesn't auto correct numbers, I don't think. Oh Jesus! My mom. There, I sent you the correct. My mom sent. My mom sent her physical therapist instead of ten dollars, a thousand dollars in Venmo. Show your brother the uh, text. Yeah. Oh, he's got it. Let me see this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I saw the name. Yeah. A thousand dollars. This was. This is two years. I was so embarrassed I couldn't tell tell anybody. Two years ago, my mom sent my her physical therapist instead of a ten dollar tip via Venmo a thousand dollars. That's too much. Yeah, and I had to call that gentleman awkwardly. And scrape that back. That was painful. Mike, I replied I have, to your text. Uh, uh, I have a confession to make from last week since you brought this up. Yes. Okay. About your mom sending a Venmo. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I but anyway, so I have to say Let's this. Settle bets. Oh, I you can do this digitally? <laughs> yes. uh, last week was uh, July 9th. And um, no, it was July 9th. June I mean, 9th. June 9th. June 9th. Oh, my God. I'm uh, over, here, right so, over here now. Yeah, we're over here now, Mike. June 9th last week. I'm, I'm nervous about this, uh, even bringing it up. It's right in the middle of birthday this season. This is something. All right, just calm down for just a second. Take a breath or two. I, uh, because I have to. When I'm going to uh, share information, which I do regularly on this uh, program that uh, sheds a bad light on me, mm -hmm. I like to be careful about how I present it initially. Correct. It's all yours. Once you guys have it mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. Uh, once you have it, you have it. It'll be used <laughs> down the road, as sure. it always is, as it often is. Uh, so it'll be it'll be out there. Um, how do I start? Last uh, June 9th, last week, I'm uh, sitting there, and uh, I think just vitting out in the afternoon. Not much going on. Carla had already gotten home from work. We're uh, we're vegetating. Uh, Michael's probably taking his Spanish online class at that mm -hmm. point. So it's somewhere between 5 and 5.30. And uh, we're sitting there, the phone rings, and I say, ah, haven't heard from her a while. It's my uh, daughter, Catherine. Ah, oh, how nice. And um, at, the conversation starts, and we, we, we're chatting, and we're chatting, and we're chatting. And then uh, she says something along the lines of, so um, I, I don't know why she was calling initially, but there was nothing obvious. And then she said, yeah, well, we're probably just uh, – going to stay at home tonight. And as I hear her say that, probably going to stay home tonight, uh, the bell goes off in my head, and I suddenly realize at that particular moment, it's her birthday. It's her 28th birthday. Aww. Yeah, bad dad. I copped to it. I totally copped to it. At this point, you weren't there for her birth, though. So, Car Carla, no, yeah, he was there for the birth. Bet your ass I was there. Stop it. Uh, and I, I look over at my wife and I said, it's, did you send something? Cause I rely on Carla to do yeah. that for me. Yeah. Not that Carla was thrown under the bus. This is my child. This is Carla is the stepmom, mm -hmm. but Carla has been amazing yeah. about it. And thank you Venmo. Uh, be, oh, I know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. She says, did you send me some, uh, lobster meat and some chowder and a new england seafood and i'm like uh, honey no i <laughs> i certainly didn't that's when i went that's when i put it together because right. i wouldn't have been bright enough to figure it out just based on the date and the fact that i'm talking to my daughter so i i pivot and and you feel, told her that you did send the lobster uh no okay i, good. I couldn't lie i figured kathy uh, from maine sent that perfect but it's like so many things like that don't get properly attributed to somebody, especially if they're sending a gift. Yeah. What's, they're not anonymous. We get anonymous stuff sometimes, you know, from all over. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people will not want to be anonymous. I, I think particularly They'll forget with, the card. with it Amazon. Happens. It happens. They'll forget right? the card. Right? Yeah. That's yeah, all. Happens yeah. Not, yeah. It's not uncommon for no. that to happen. No, it's, so, I've, I've sent flowers, you know, like, is it, is it bereavement flowers? Bereavement. Bereavement. I'm an idiot. Damn it. No, you're it's fine. bereavement flowers. You know, for, yeah. and when then, someone passes. And then months later, I'll be like, I was like, I hope you got our flowers. They're like, oh, it was you guys? Yeah, yeah. 
I know. We didn't this mystery Thank bouquet so that showed much. up. Yeah, yeah and you know, I was like, uh, I was fine. I just make sure you got him. Mm. That's it. But in the era of uh, technology, where instant uh, guilt can be assuaged, uh, who's you know who set the lobster? Pretty, uh, I have no idea. I don't mm. think we found out yet. Catherine didn't know, and I certainly wasn't going to pursue it. I was too busy looking at Carla saying, "Did you send her?" Something? Oh, I got an email, Mike. The lobster was from Mark Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She sent I, you. Uh, she sent you lobster. In by the, the past, way, right? I saw my uh, partner. Yeah. In the uh, that tournament, mm -hmm. and my wife is good friends with his wife too, so she's been over there a few times. I haven't seen the guy since they came to, you know, my buddy uh, that you met, John, yeah. who came who came to the show. I shouldn't be paranoid about that, but he was out watering his lawn, and I uh, saw him say, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And he kept watering his lawn, and I, I get, you know, I get paranoid about the slightest thing, right? Yes. I mean, if you don't, if you're not even turning the hose, you know, you're not even yeah. letting go of the squeeze, you know, hey. Was it his you? birthday? Uh, no, I, stop it. I, I don't, I just... Uh, this is the this is the ABCs of me. I know, and I know the insecurities. It's just horrible. There's not enough medication. Is Catherine uh, at a point now where she realizes that it's the ABCs of you? Uh yeah. Well, I, I think she probably has longer than most because she's mm. my oldest child, and right? She gets it. She gets me. She mm. gets. Uh, she understands. But at this point, she didn't. And at this point, uh, I didn't. I immediately <coughs> will bring that up. You know, because of my guilt, I chose not to this time. Yeah. I chose to go to Venmo mm -hmm. and send her some cash immediately. Yes. And be done with it. And then find out how she's doing. By the way, she got promoted. Oh, great. I'm very happy with her. Uh, you know, she's not going into bad neighborhoods in Los Angeles anymore. Uh, she's very excited about this new line of work that she's in. She's still out there auditioning. Uh, you know, although the chances, uh, you know, it's Hollywood. So, you know, if the lucky stick hits her, the lucky stick hits her, but the, she's happy and she sounded very happy and, uh, her man, Dennis is doing well. And I, I, so I chat with them for a good long time. And then I realized afterwards, and then Carla, you know, cannot be my brain for that. It's up to me. This is my child. I was in the delivery room when this happened. I was, a, mm -hmm. I was completely mortified at my own behavior, but through the miracle of modern technology, immediately I was able to, you know, deal with that and give the gift that keeps on giving, which for most of my daughter's lives, they seem to enjoy more than anything else. And I most certainly people understand do. why. Most yeah, people most do. people do. I what, would. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. when do we stop? And you're talking to a guy who, you know, my dad would give me presents like I was a child because he, I don't think he realized how old I was. Because he's been gone for so long. Can you cite a specific example? Yeah, when I turned uh, thirty, um, uh, this is this is prior to the watch. He he gave me like the little kids' money envelopes. You know, oh, like a card that has a, yeah, like, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. But my uncle Bill Sheehan used to do that for you children. Know, the one that had the wandering eye. Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he'd come over and he goes. All right, we want to. Here's the area here. Yeah. <laughs> here. Here you go. And then he says, great day. Five dollar bill. There's money in there. And I said, I, I thanks, Dad. And I don't. We, my dad's been gone for most of my birthdays, and and it's just the truth. So oh. it's I always. I'm used to getting it in the rears. That's so uh, sad. Isolate well, that. Oh, hey, I don't uh, want to hear any of your sex yeah, talk. So. On this show. <laughs> so. You know, you when your dad isn't there for your birthday, you get used to it. So. I think I Rob think, too. Both of you guys, very sad. I think yeah. it's easier when dads forget because moms are supposed to remember. Dads are supposed to forget. Yeah. Oh God, terrible. I'm trying to let I, you I, off I the hook bad. here. Yeah. Thank you. That's. I'm surprised on yeah. a Monday at your kindness. Yes, I, I didn't thank you. expect it. I don't expect it. Yeah. I wouldn't bring it up if I yeah. expected to be. Free dads are supposed to of, forget. Yeah. Now, when yeah. is Elizabeth's birthday? Uh, July 11th. Okay, you must remember that. Well, I think no. She well, she will be coming up next week uh, or the week after up to uh, Maine. So she's coming up, and they're staying uh, June twenty fifth. They will be in Maine. But so, will she um, be there on the eleventh? No, she will not be there on the. 11th. Well, Set a reminder in your phone yeah. right now. I think I think we're cool. Yeah, we're will cool. you get we're her fine. in the we'll do a little something up there. Uh, pardon me. Hey, I don't talk to Connor or Elizabeth about their personal. No, life, you right? know what I mean. Come on, I don't do that. That's disgusting. <laughs> well, um, kids will anywho, be kids. Uh, but but anyway, because Experiment. of the fact that I've forgotten their birthday, yeah, uh, it came uh, it, it came to me in a dream that uh, I think we have to celebrate the spirit of giving early, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen. 
to me, it is time for a major, major, major announcement mm. on the Mike O'Mara Show. Are you going to cue me? Go! Oh, <laughs> the holidays are all about tradition. <laughs> yeah, it sounds weird that I'm saying this uh, in the middle of June, but I am. <laughs> so deal with it. Uh, and the greatest holiday tradition of them all is returning. It is the 2023 TMOS Fruitcake Futures! Woo! God bless us. That's right. Oh, 2023 TMOS Fruitcake Futures. Beauty. <laughs> From the first bite, your taste buds will dance with joy. Oh, ho, 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 Santa! Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and your heart will overflow with happiness, knowing that you've supported your favorite podcast. We don't settle for anything less than perfection! <laughs> That's why Rob personally oversees every fruitcake baked in the TMOS kitchens. Otherwise, we wouldn't put our name on it. <laughs> Don't wait. What? Now what? Hold on. It's an on-air. Ad Don't wait. Okay, oh, it's changed. <laughs> Buy now and indulge later because these fruitcakes taste even better than you remember. And this year, ladies and gentlemen, we are not hoping to triple. We are not hoping to quadruple. We are not hoping to quintuple. We are hoping to sextuple. That's hot. The sales of our fruitcakes. Why? Because we're almost broke. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. Uh... Every time you hear a Derm Glow Skin commercial on this radio show, you know that we need you to buy a fruitcake too. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but the accountants in our audience might know that. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, hear me out. We want we want to sex tuffle the fruitcake futures this year. We really do. And don't uh, confuse the fruitcakes with the Derm Glow and mm, rub the fruitcake mm, on no. your face. No, don't do that. No. Please. Uh, by the way, they taste even better than you remember. Visit MikeOmeraShow.com, click the banner, and place your order today. Remember, every purchase you make supports TMOS. This is our official radiothon. Yes. Telethon. This is our fundraising entity, and we need it this year more than ever. And we need it now. 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 Uh, it's a win-win TMOS Fruitcake Futures. Get ready to kick off the holidays right now. You can't say that with Echo. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Better. Worth it. But bigger. Bigger. Right now. Bigger. And please accept our heartfelt thanks for supporting. Su <laughs> and please support our heartfelt and please accept our heartfelt thanks for supporting TMOS. Merry Christmas. I'm not going to say the other thing. You don't have to. The old show. Stop being Actually, like the old listeners. No, it's not old. It's it every is. bit now. No, it's now, baby. It's Beatles. Yes, the most popular band in the world of all times. People like the Beatles, Mike. Buy a fruitcake. I like the Beatles. See? I like the, you know what I really like? And I, I, I want to. So, uh, Fruitcake yeah. Futures. Yes, please. Let me mention it. Go to the website. It Thank is you. our fundraiser. We need it, folks. We really need it bad. Look, uh, the show has ups and downs financially. Uh, this is one of our downs, and we're really trying to make it through. Mm -hmm. Advertising sales. If uh, You know, we don't go into the weeds with that. But, uh, you know, it, it, the fact is uh, broadcasting, satellite radio, podcasts, uh, advertising is tight and uh, it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. We've been there before. We will be there again uh, and we will come out of this. So we're looking forward to your support. If you can, uh, you know, 
buy a few this year because we really need all the help. You know what? They make That's great the they make great gifts. You know, I say I, I say my I give my pitch with a with a great deal of sincerity and care, and then you with your I don't give a shit tone come right on and say they make great gifts, Mike, and it just Mike, diminishes Mike, what I do, Mike, and I hate you for it, Mike. It's the only thing I hate you for, but I hate you for that more than anything. Be honest, out hates strong. Yes, that is not the only reason you hate me. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> And also, right. do you know that I put so much care into these? You are the cakes? one that you're yeah. the one that works. And that so works when you your say, and so when you say that I'm insincere, that's false. I'm trying. That's desperately. a mountain of lies. I am trying. De- I don't want to water down the fruitcake futures with an argument Let's right focus now. But I on have the to message. say, yes. I have to say, this is our my my sincere emotional appeal to the heartstrings of our listening audience. That would it be safe to say, Oscar Santana, man who uh, has been. Uh, working his ass off, trying to keep this thing together for you, Oscar. Would it would it be safe to say that the fruitcake futures this year are about as important as they ever have been? Yeah, now more than ever. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. Thank you. All right. Uh, so that's that. I just wanted to uh, make sure. Now I lost my train of thought because I was going to move on. You were going to say uh, something about the Beatles, I think. Actually, oh, I was going to say uh, when Tina Turner passed away. I don't think uh, we dwelled on it. Uh, we, we mentioned it. It was a yeah. massive story. I am. Uh, I had me a weekend uh, that was really fantastic with the family, getting out and enjoying things. I could tell you all about that, but I'd rather tell you about the fact that, um, it, you know, when you get to be a little longer in the tooth, uh, you realize that uh, some of your regular artists uh, that you grew up with are beginning to leave us, and uh, I I went to a couple of versions of Tina Turner uh, videos where she did "Proud Mary," which mm-hmm. was her signature song at all of her concerts, and uh, I just forgot what a what what just an uplifting, exciting live performance mm-hmm. that was, and I realized that well into her fifties, uh, she performed uh, at that very high level, and I just. I suddenly said I didn't give that enough mention when uh, when she passed away, and I wanted to come back and correct that on today's show because she's just uh, what a di- there was a uh, performance that she did on one of the award shows where she had Elton John on keyboards and she had Cher come out during the chorus, and it was just like all these you know all these icons who are uh, elderly now yeah are and and in Tina's case gone. It just made me so sad because I said, wow, I just remember, remember, remember. And every generation goes through that. Mm -hmm. Every single generation goes through that. And it really is, I I think my advice to uh, the the older folks in our audience would be, own it, folks. Cherish it. Uh, Reminisce. Have your moments. Dig it. Dig on it. Because don't force feed something that ain't you into you because you can't do it. You got to just dig that. And if you get a chance... Uh, check out Tina Turner live at Wembley and uh, and just watch what it is. Wembley is just a an amazing venue. I mean, it really is to watch. I think that's where the uh, the Freddie Mercury performance yeah. was when uh, he did Radio Gaga. And uh, well, that was half just, of Live Aid at Wembley, right? Half yeah, there and half ha- in Philly, right? I, I th- it was just so incredibly powerful. And I just love the British audiences. I think they yes. are really re- they love their entertainment. And Tina Turner was just uh, special, and you know, so many people were were special. Uh, I so think I it's harder harder now because of social media and the way media is more available than it ever has been before. Yeah, people that were key and important when we were growing up, they can stay relevant because they're always yeah. there. I mean, yeah. it's not like you know when you stopped here when say your grandparents stopped hearing big band music on the radio, big band music just kind of went away went away and yeah. but it doesn't have to anymore you can still do whatever you, chances are if you have a favorite artist they have their own channel on Sirius. look i i always talk about the fact that i'm not comfortable in a crowd scene unless i'm on stage looking out at them right uh and uh, that's kind of true but i will tell you that uh, down here we have a minor minor league hockey team when i say minor minor this i think would be the equivalent of a ball if it was a baseball yeah. team and uh, they captured the spirit of uh, of our little town down here 
Uh, our little town that's been beat to crap, I'll be very honest with you, our little town that's taken an awful lot of heat, and our little town that has bounced back with a uh, a resiliency that I don't talk about that often. I make more jokes about Florida than I do say nice things about what they've done. I think perhaps with uh, my wife uh, going down into a shopping center that was underwater and been completely renovated and being part of that now, mm-hmm. uh, albeit at... Uh, very late in the in the uh, in the development, but being part of uh, the resurgence and coming back, and how scary it is because now here we are in hurricane season again. But this little town, uh, every little win helps, and I think that's great. You, you think of Florida as a paradise down here, and the weather's magnificent, and we love it, and we love being down here in the tropical climate. I do. I, I've I've loved it since I've been down here, but. Uh, always nice to have a town have a win. Yeah. And so uh, I took my son to a semifinal playoff game uh, against, I remember, the Newfoundland Growlers uh, mm-hmm. when they were here. Uh, and the arena is literally, I could walk to it, and I'm not exaggerating. I could walk to this arena if I wanted to. So in the semifinals, I realized this is pretty good. wasn't a sellout when we went to see the playoffs. However, uh They had a uh, fourth game scheduled for Friday, and I said, this will be perfect. And uh, at the last possible second I could have done it, I was still able to score some tickets and right into the area that we had sat before, which is a corner area down there. And my wife, my son, and me, we all went out to the Florida Everblades hockey game. And man, it was, I felt, here's the main reason I loved it. I felt so happy for those guys, those guys who, to the best of my knowledge, most of them will not skate in the NHL. It's just a fact. They're either, uh, you know, going to be in this league at, you know, which is still a high level. It's still Mm -hmm. professional hockey. They still get paid to play. Right. But uh, I think it's more likely people in the AHL have a chance to, you know, go up. That's the that's the league that, uh, you know, they come and go between the NHL and that. But it was just so cool to see standing room only at our little uh, venue called Hertz Arena down here. Uh, and it was just so much fun to go out there in my neighborhood and watch a sellout and then watch an absolutely spectacular hockey game where they came on. They came from behind mm-hmm. and uh, and beat the Idaho Steelhead, swept them four to nothing to win what is called the Kelly Cup. And I never knew what the Kelly Cup was when uh, when I was hearing about it. I just would see you'd see it at the news. I think they might they may have won the uh, the championship on the road last year. I, okay, but I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. I don't know for a fact. But this guy Kelly, who formed the league uh, back in the '80s, was there, and this old guy they trotted him out to present the cup with his name on it, and it was really really. Did he super know where cool. he was? Uh, he was, he was old. He was very old, yeah. but he seemed to be into it. Well, he didn't seem to be, he seemed to, uh, you know, he had that, uh, look old people get on sometimes. It's like, yeah. With the mouth open. Uh, that, sure. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was, uh, it was big fun and they don't even have like legitimate TV coverage of it. Right. Right. You don't see, they don't, they don't cover them on TV. So you've got these grainy, uh, videos from the local TV stations to, doing the best they can. They made as big a deal of it as they could have, but being there like it is for any, I've never been at a hockey championship. I've never seen a team that I was rooting for clinch and my son was out of his mind and we were down in you the corner. You all are so happy. Yeah, with this it Kelly was, Cup uh, victory, great. maybe next year's coverage will be better. I don't know. I don't know. There, there, there have been rumors swirling around that because of the fact that they've won two of these championships back to back, they may be elevated oh. in uh, in their leagues. Uh, you know, it's not like soccer where you get the automatic elevation right. into the Premier League mm-hmm. or something like that. It doesn't work that way. But I don't know the inner machinations of uh, these hockey leagues. I know, I know that these teams are, I think the ECHL has about a thousand teams. I mean, if you went through <laughs> the, uh, the hockey league they play in and you tried to find the, uh, the teams, uh, they're just, they're all over the place. They're we, in Canada. They're, they're everywhere. Speaking, yeah. speaking of sports, we, we don't have to go too deep into it, Mike, but one congrats to your home team. Yes. Uh, the, the, the pictures you all posted, it looked like you were having a blast. Yeah, it was I, good, I, a good I, picture. I was like, are they yeah, in the Stanley Cup Finals? I don't know what's happening here. This mm. is wild. 
Um, but you looked happy and you looked like you were thrilled to be at, at an event like that with your son and Carla, right? It was great. It was fun. It was a lot Are of fun. you all at all involved in the fever that's come to um, Miami with Messi, the greatest player of all time, coming to Miami's MLS team? Uh, Inter Miami yes. is the name of the team, and um, I, um, I, you know, one of the things I heard was that that fended me off that right away because my son would be front row if he could. He'd yeah, I remember They're messy, all messy, messy. International yeah. soccer. Uh, let me let me let you know, folks. It was there. You know, there was that spike for a while, then it waned a little bit. Uh, at least Michael's generation. Very, 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 very much into it and aware of it. So watch what happens because I think uh, uh, this move for Messi going to Miami is a big move for the league. As far as locally and my own participation, mm -hmm. as soon as I heard the news story that Inter Miami Inter. ticket right. ticket uh, prices have been you know inflated and sellouts are happening. Yeah. Yeah. even even with games where you know he's not playing. I don't know. I just uh, I, I backed off of that right away. And it is of what course, are the a two hour prices? drive. I don't know yet. I okay. don't know. I haven't really done a deep dive on it. You know, I can, mean, can I uh, give you some numbers just to sure. give you some further okay. context about what he's making? Yes. And and so this is before I found I, I saw the final numbers, but I was um, and I, you know, I think I'm not going to use names, but this makes sense. I was in a, a meeting with an ESPN executive and I was uh, curious about their thoughts on why the streaming rights for MLS went to um, went to Apple and they didn't they weren't more aggressive with the YouTube NFL package rights that okay. YouTube's going to offer. And I sat there and the way that this guy this is why they do what they do, Mike. Yep. He said, look, uh, they could have overpaid for live programming that comes with, uh, you know, America's sport yep. NFL. And they were in the bidding war. They bowed out gracefully. And they decided to triple down on MLS. So right now, if you have Apple Plus, you can get all the MLS teams. They, the way the production value is like something I've never seen before. It's like what you would expect from Apple. They make it easy to watch the games. You clear that through. You, 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 it's all built in. And the interface is easy. The other side is this. Is, have you ever thought of the logic and the popularity of Ted Lasso? About a, uh, Ted Lasso is about a game that isn't America's sport right now. Right. Yep. It's mm -hmm. just not. I think it's huge, though. And it educated so many people about of soccer. Yeah, it did indeed. So, it did indeed. And the and the one thing I think the common thread. Yes. Through Ted Lasso. Take the feel good stuff out of it te temporarily. The common thread mm -hmm. uh, through the television mm -hmm. program, Ted Lasso was passion. Yes. Was mm -hmm. fan. Yes. yes. Correct. Passion. And Correct. I think that seeped into the consciousness of people that watch that show. I know it did for me. I, I, I loved it. And it kind of coincided with last year's World Cup as well. And mm -hmm. that was a one-two punch. But so if you take away the barriers of who's going to understand soccer and realize that they'll get into it and they've got this pop culture uh, phenomenon, phenomenon in, in Ted Lasso that said, okay, I'm going to, people can get soccer. They understand. They have the internal metrics that says how popular Ted Lasso actually was. Right. Yeah. So for them to triple down on MLS at a lower price point and own the rights, mm -hmm. and then it's, instead of uh, Messi going to, you know, to be part of the Saudi... Uh, for, uh, Real Madrid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. He, the Barcelona didn't have any money. The other option was, uh, um, you know, Saudi money to go over and play over there for a big payday. Yeah, it's called Live Soccer. Uh, it's, soccer, no, it's not right. called the soccer. That's a jerk. joke. It's run by uh, Greg Norman. <laughs> of course, he loves soccer. <laughs> like, like, like superstars in the past have moved and gone and played in Saudi. Arabia. I mean, soccer players change like they change Correct. their Correct. Yes. Mm. But to come to Inter Miami at this point in his career, where he's not washed up, and have the opportunity to be paid a base of fifty million dollars a year, then. A revenue share of the Apple Plus subscriptions, yeah. which is massive. This is like a this is like an Air Jordan deal. Yeah, yeah I was gonna and say a la, a la Jordan. The, back uh, in the Adidas day. rev share that comes through for him, and this is the big, this is the big to do, and the opportunity at the end of his career to buy into or purchase his own MLS team. Mm -hmm. You're talking about uh, a multitude 
of what was going to be maybe a four hundred million dollar deal in Saudi Arabia to now being you know possibly ten x that simply because he's playing the long game and yeah. Apple having the rights to MLS and offer him a, piece, a revenue share of what comes in is right. it's just it's mind blowing at a high level. I'm happy because I think it's going to raise the MLS. Uh, well, not just quality of play, but the overall exposure, which it is right now. This is the first time we're talking about it right now. Of right? course. Right. And I on the other side, more. Mike, think about this. Um, it, like 15 years ago, a franchise for the MLS cost $37 million, a sub 50 to get in, right? Mm-hmm. To start a team. Right. Um, San Diego just paid roughly half a billion dollars to start a team. Let me ask you a question about the nuts and bolts of professional soccer and going to a game. All right. Yes. One of the greatest challenges. This is a logistic question that I I mean it sincerely. I took in most of my soccer, uh, and this is even at the college level with my nephew Michael. And my my nephew Michael was a phenomenal soccer player. He got a uh, you know he he played and played and played and played. And I went to a lot of his games, mm-hmm. including when he made a, a Division One Colgate University college team. The frustration is when you got little bitty bleachers. Yes. And you're watching soccer, it is a darn hard sport to follow. If I go to a stadium, a stadia, <laughs> if I go to a stadium, it is is higher up better when you're going well, to a, like an MLS or a World Cup game? In my opinion, yes. Okay. But I would think but so. Most yeah. of these, like if you look at DC United Stadium, Audi Field, the way the bleachers are set up, you're almost on top of the field. And by that, but I mean, they're almost vertical. They're vertical. Okay. All right. So, so that is because I will, the, the, what you started with was a question for me. Yes. If I can score a ticket, yeah. I would love to go see an MLS game. Those words wouldn't have come out of my mouth uh, five years ago. Mm-hmm. And I probably base it on the fact that I've got a little man in there with a messy jersey mm-hmm. uh, who likes all sports. He's sports crazed, and it's fantastic. Uh, but I think uh, everything you say is accurate. It's going to be a boon for MLS, and it's going to be a boon for Apple TV. I think it's going to it's going to do very well for them, and I think they were smart to do it that way. And it'll be interesting to you know, it's a major platform to see the. MLS games, you know, when you're, especially during the downtime, mm, yeah, uh, you know, when that July is a great example of it. I, I don't know what the season for MLS is. I don't know if it, when it starts, is it, a, is it similar to it, a, uh, yeah, well, football? It's, it, it, no, it's much longer and, okay. and so, so it and, will and, overlap. And, with yeah. But football. in soccer's year round, right. You can follow the Euro, the Euro leagues, the French league, the Spanish league. You follow all of these leagues. I know this cause I grew up with it. I, I want my mom watches soccer ever. Like, yesterday was the under 20. Uh, World Cup championships, um, like uh, sub twenty. Uh, it's like junior league, junior, junior league, junior A. She and, glued uh, to her hockey. TV, and then we watched La Voz Kids, which is the Voice Kids. Afterwards, that's her thing. Like, what's that's the just, Voice Kids? Like a kids' uh, talent competition. Little kids in Spain singing awesome. their hearts out. Oh God bless! And them. then crying that's when fantastic. they get dumped, and then playing so, soccer. And, yes, but, that's awesome. Now, I love that. with the with the length of the season and the. Obviously, the, the increased interest in soccer. Do you think it will take a piece of NFL action? Or, or is no. the NFL so strong no, that it no, goes on? No, no, no. no. no so no, it's in addition so. to. No, it's in addition to. But it's more. It's more. And we need it. We need more. I think okay. we need more. Mark my words. In 10 years, MLS, like, it's, it's, I mean, what's considered a top? Give me your top four sports. Uh, spectator sports yes. in the United States? Yes. NFL football. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pickleball. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> NBA. Yes. Uh, NBA, right? Uh, National Hockey League, MLB, uh, golf. Yeah, I before, would say golf before MLB. Uh, I, I because there's I, I don't know a, what the ratings are. Yeah, uh, but golf but is on every Sunday. So this is golf driven is on off, every Sunday, off yeah. live nationally. It's on yeah. every Sunday. So the, the the pivot to live sports. This is why live news. That's that's all of that works. Yeah. Um, can I can I jut in my little thing about golf too? Since we're doing, we'll get all the sports out of the yeah. way in yeah. the first segment here. I just have to mention the Canadian Open last uh, yesterday. Uh, absolutely does not get better when you're talking about golf coverage. When you're talking about, first of all, sudden death playoffs 
in a national championship are spectacular. They're spectacular in the NFL. They're spectacular in hockey. They're spectacular, period. Sudden death is the greatest thing ever. You're not like, you're not put off by the the live PGA merger? Like it these are no, terrible tastes in my mouth. No, not at all. Could care less. Happy that really? golf is yeah, mm-hmm. happy. after the PGA were oh, they were No, they, who cares? Let's move on. I don't <laughs> care. Just play. <laughs> Just play. I don't worry about it. Let the money guys worry about that. Yeah. Let the, I don't care who gets what. I don't care about any of them. I okay. just want to see them play. That's what I care about as a fan. I truly feel that way. This guy, uh, just toe-to-toe, one, two, three, and four. Four holes of sudden death. They go to four extra holes. Tied the first. Tied the second. Tied the third. And then this dude is coming up. His name is uh, Nick Taylor. He is a Canadian. They are in Canada Mm. for the Canadian Open. That's a fake name. These fans are B. They are bat s crazy. They are just. They're singing "Oh Canada." They're out of their minds. You got the other Canadian players that that have come. One of the guys, Mike Weir, the old guy that made the cut, he drove to his hotel or drove to his house and came back because he wanted to be there because this guy was in the hunt. You got the British players because uh, you got Fleetwood, Tommy Fleetwood, who is a Brit, and the British guys are on the side. It looks like a Ryder Cup. They're all coming back and they're all standing around the green. So it comes right down to it where Tommy Fleetwood has to lay up. He lays up and hits it about 10 feet. He's got about a 10-foot putt, which he's made before, to make birdie, all right? You've got a uh, you've got this guy, Nick Taylor. He gets on in two shots, so he's got a putt for an eagle, but it's impossible because he's 70, 71 feet away. Okay. There's just no way. But So you just hope because it's an uphill putt that he's going to get close. Mm-hmm. So it's looking like we probably it's will old. have yeah. a fifth, <clears throat> fifth hole. overtime hole. That we will have a fifth overtime hole because they've been going punch, 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 mm-hmm. punch. And Nick Taylor stands over and he said he's got to hit this firm to get it up over the hill. 71 feet and he makes the putt. Wow. wow. Jim Nance, our good buddy Jim mm-hmm. Nance, whose his comment is, seriously? <laughs> That's what it was. And it was uh, so sports, sports, sports. Were and they had to play through the sports. forest fires. They had to play through. Yeah, they were all hacking. They were all choking <laughs> to death. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Canada. thanks, Canada. I didn't see any smoke. They sent it all down here. <laughs> Bastards. Classic Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now I'm with you, Rob. Boy, yeah. they sent all their poo down here. And they, meanwhile, they're enjoying a perfectly clear. La, uh, la, 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 la. It, it was raining. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the news after this. Hi, everybody. This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by Legacy Box. Get to know me. No, I'm sorry. Get to know Legacy Box. Yes. The ultimate solution for preserving your precious memories. Don't let your box of old home movies deteriorate in a hot, damp, musty box this summer. With Legacy Boxes Save Your Tape Sale, you can easily access and protect those memories forever for only $9 per tape. It's like magic. Simply send in your Legacy Box filled with VHS tapes, camcorder tapes, and pictures. Their professional team will digitize everything, and they will return it to you on a thumb drive or in the cloud, along with uh, your original items. Experience the amazing feeling of bringing your past into the present and preserving it for the future. We've all used it, and we all love it, because you can't put a price on memories. Don't let this summer heat get you uh, in a rough shape with your videotapes. It ages them. It makes them all Mm. yucky. Film reels, same thing, and it fades your photos. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer. Remember, I don't want to overstate it, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, it really is your destiny. (laughs) From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, ladies and gentlemen. And we begin today with uh, Ozempic. Now, I'm on a medication called Manjaro. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, gained a little this weekend. Stupid sub. Knew it. Knew it. Let my guard down. Can't let your guard down. Even when you're on these drugs, can't do it. Got to yeah. eat the right stuff. Got to put it in your body. Big, big, fat sub roll. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. Does not work. Uh Everybody's trying Ozempic these days to lose weight, but nobody's fessing up. 
and Amy Schumer is tired of it. <laughs> On a recent episode of Watch What Happens Live, Amy said, quote, everyone has been lying, saying, oh, smaller portions. Like, shut the F up. <laughs> You're on Ozempic. Or one of those things. Or you got work done. Just stop. Be real with people. When I got lipo, I said I got lipo. <laughs> Amy actually tried Ozempic herself, but it wasn't for her. Here's the quote. I was one of those people that felt so sick and couldn't play with my son. Yeah, um, I know people that have uh, yeah. gone that route and have gotten sick. Usually small people. I have a little trouble for it. Me? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Pour it into my body. Unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. If I yeah. grow a third testicle, you'll know it was not the right thing to do. Or uh, was it? Amy also discussed quitting the Barbie movie because it wasn't feminist enough. I don't know about that. Hmm. I don't know. I sounded, I just said Hey, you did it. You win. I don't it. know you about win. that. I, I just said that. it naturally. I don't know about that. Mike wins today. Uh, but she thinks it looks great under its new creative team, and uh, she's excited to uh, see it. Enough with the Barbie movie. That's uh, that's great. What's uh, what's your take on this? I mean, you've been I've been very upfront about it. What the mm -hmm. Barbie movie? No, the no. We talked about Olympics. it because yeah. it is funny. I uh, I never. This is the type of thing I'm incapable of being dishonest about. Yeah. First yeah. of all, why? I'm not doing a. You know, I'm not going to be on a runway anytime soon. I feel better. I'm happy about yeah. that, and I don't give a rat's ass what people think. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that I got there. I'm happy I look better. The, the vast majority of people look at you from afar, and if you you know if you look a little bit more fit, yeah. uh, I like it. It doesn't. Uh, all of my friends who know what yeah. the deal is, uh, it hasn't diminished what they say. Uh, you know, when I get up north, though, my family will. <laughs> I uh, you can count on it. Absolutely count. Do you on have a it. particular? It. You don't have to name them. I do. Got, let me tell you what's going to happen. Okay. And I swear <laughs> to God, I am going on vacation this Thursday. I will be, be uh, back a week from the following Monday. Right. Make no mistake. It will be the third degree. I will try to avoid it, but I'm going to be honest. Yes. And then okay. I will give you the question. All right. You know. Maybe I'll record it <laughs> secretly. Wouldn't that be funny? Uh, in the new Netflix docuseries, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone dive deep into their race to be the biggest action stars of the 80s. This is fun. Stallone, I got to watch this. It's a great, Has anybody, a great doc. I watched you've it. You've seen it? You've watched it. All three episodes. Stallone uh, says their rivalry got so heated that, quote, we couldn't even stand to be on the set. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't even stand to be in the same room. People had to separate us. Uh, they're good friends now, and Stallone is even willing to admit that Arnold was better. Here's the quote. He was superior. He just had all the answers. He had the body. He had the strength. That was his character. Well, also, uh, Arnold never made stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. Arnold made some clunkers, though. Yeah. He did. But not a lot. But Arnold made a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Period. I mean, even uh, the one we give him the most heat for, like Jingle All the Way. Yeah, is actually not a bad movie. Oh, uh, but it's and it's a hit. It is period. a huge hit. Yeah. He adds, quote, uh, I had to get my ass kicked constantly, whereas Arnold, he never got hurt much. <laughs> and I'm going, Arnold, you could go out and fight a dragon and you'd come back with a band-aid. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think guys. I think you'll enjoy the doc if you haven't seen it. I'd love it. Is it better all, than it, Fubar? It shows all sides of him, and it also it gave, it gave me a different perspective on who he is and how he made his fortune. In my eyes, he was uh, Mr. Olympia for a cup of coffee, and then he went into movies. Yeah, but it took him almost a decade to break into into Hollywood. It's wild. Yeah, and, and you know, against all odds. Let's be yes, honest. Sure. The way he sounded, against all odds. Correct. It was just his will. Really <laughs> incredible. If you were hoping that Netflix crackdown on password sharing was uh, going to blow up in their faces, uh, bad news, folks. Netflix started enforcing it May 23rd, and over the next six days, they averaged 73,000 new signups per day. Hey, including nearly good for one, them. <laughs> including 100,000 on the 26th and 27th. Uh, from May 25th through the 28th, they had the most signups since early 2019. The spike in May was also bigger than what they saw in March and April of 2020 when people were signing up like crazy in the early months of pandemic lockdowns. Netflix also saw an increase in cancellations, but the uh, new subscriptions more than made up for that. So, there's uh, that. Have you had a prompt yet? Yeah, I've had it. What's that? The prompt that says, is this your home? No, not yet. Oh, 
Let I need mine you. on Amazon. The, the joy I had, Mike, when I said, yes, this is my home, because then it cuts off my freeloading sister and brother who could afford to pay for it. They just don't. Right. And, and it said for $7.99 more, you can let the people that are using your account good to go. And I said, $8 is a bridge too far. And I said, this is my home. This is <laughs> I am me. Thank you. I am me. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. That was kind of you yes. uh, to do that. By the way, uh, I did not rent on Amazon Prime Book Club the next chapter. Uh-oh. Uh, we, uh, we've had a little uh, security issue with my uh, Prime, and uh, oh, no. they've been dancing. I, I don't know whether that was, you know, someone in Maine. I have no Mike, idea, but I changed. It's an excellent password. film. Uh, well, I got refunded. <laughs> oh, I, I've never seen it. I'm not know. into books. Why would I ever rent that? It's so a club, though. <laughs> anyway. Maybe there's uh, refreshments. <laughs> here's what I love these stories about okay. hidden treasure. A family in L.A. found a million pennies while they cleaned out the house of their father who had just passed away. Uh, it was a massive pile of coins discovered in a crawl space in the uh, uh, house uh, where this guy who was an immigrant from Germany. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> the family's theory is he started gathering the coins after the U.S. shifted from making pennies out of copper and uh, switching to zinc during yeah. the Second World War, and he hoped to make a profit out of the value of the metal. The man's son-in-law, John Reyes, told NBC LA that uh, these have literally been untouched for decades. Ew. And uh, he thinks that's unique. Why? Well, it's not... Why is it ew? Well, because the they, they're probably, like, moldy and yucky because they've, they've just been down in what? Like, in a bag? It's uh yeah they a lot of them in bags some of them in boxes I saw they've got rolls of uh, like uh, they've got boxes with fifty dollar I like, dollar I like the boxes yeah I like the rolled coins that's nice <laughs> that that's the, he's a hoarder this is the stuff he cares no, about no Mike this I like it. my family is a family that likes coins you like coins I do love my mom's a huge collector of coins does she have any valuable collectibles uh, she has a Morgan dollar that's valued at one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does Good have quite a few. She has quite a few cool ones. Yeah, she does. Uh, a a penny, lot of silver. The family believes the pennies could be of interest to collectors, meaning they could possibly be worth millions. A penny from 1943 was sold for $1.7 mm. million in 2010. Other seldom seen pennies have been sold for thousands. They attempted to, to uh, deposit the coins at a bank. They were told the vault wasn't big enough to hold such a vast <laughs> amount of coins. The family is now seeking expert advice on what to do next. Now, I wonder if they attempted to deposit them just as like regular money, right? Banks, I wouldn't banks do that. Banks are funny about coins. I tried to uh, turn in some rolls of quarters, and they wouldn't take them. They well, said now, they don't have really? the ability. Yeah. What about Coinstar? You lose like what? Is it seven percent, eight percent? I mean, I don't know. I've never used Coinstar. What That's they should ridiculous. do is turn those pennies into gumballs. Thank you, Rob. But they're Appreciate like an unpacked, that. a sealed pack of like tops from 1989 or Upper Deck. They're sealed packs of pennies. Well, no, 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 no. Rolled pennies are just pennies that you roll. Yeah, but didn't they get them from the bank? Or they yeah, but them? even those you can roll yourself. Oh. Yeah. They're sealed tight. Yes. Speaking and you know, of sealed tight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> are blue balls a legitimate phenomenon? Uh, oh. Of current, uh, apparently, yes. Absolutely. Uh, what does it mean to have blue balls? It could range from feeling a bit uncomfortable to feeling frustrated uh, that this response that uh, you have, your arousal response, has not been completed. Right. It could be uh, throbbing, and it could be achy. But in terms of intense pain uh, or frequent pain, that is exceptionally rare. It is something that requires uh, immediate... Uh, is it something that requires immediate medical attention? No. Mm. But uh, the experience uh, of the pain is real, Anyone who has, uh, you know, plumbing yeah. down there uh, and is capable physically of that physiological uh, sexual response yes. uh, can experience the ache. So it's a real thing. Oh. Okay, thanks. I didn't need that. <laughs> and now Lock. a little something, something. Let's just move on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Multi-joke kicker, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Mo already. How many? And not the usual, a two-pronged kicker. Oh, I love it. Good. Two styles of joke for your entertainment today, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Stop it. Be professional. That's right. Be professional. It's a dull throbbing pain, Mike. Start from the I'm top. I'm not going to laugh. I'm going to wreck it if I laugh. Don't laugh. The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office is looking for a man who stole a Captain Morgan statue. The man and his canine accomplice in the front seat were caught on surveillance video 
removing the statue from the Lighthouse Grill at Stump Pass in Englewood, Florida, on May 19th and putting it into the bed of a blue pickup truck. This is a more serious crime in Florida, where Captain Morgan is now considered a holy relic, <laughs> along with the Budweiser Clydesdales and the Bacardi Bat. <laughs> The Lighthouse Grill at Stump Pass said the theft will not impact this weekend's Dennis Murphy Festival. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just you, a you got thing. your tickets? Inside. I got them. Yeah, like I'm it. Going up. Yeah. yeah, a little inside humor there. Thank like you. It. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll uh, take a break. Uh, when we come back, we've got a movie review. Oscar went to the Transformers yay! movie. Yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> We're caught in the... <laughs> I can't care. <laughs> I'll leave you, baby. Dead on. Thank you. Uh, KiwiCo. Let's talk about KiwiCo, shall sure. we, ladies and gentlemen? I'd love to. Okay, well, then fine. Say hello to KiwiCo, where creativity and curiosity thrive. With their expertly designed crates, every project will ignite excitement, curiosity, and moments of discovery. Picture this. Michael attacking a KiwiCo project, loving every minute of it, and staying away from screens. Bravo, KiwiCo! From magic to engineering domino machines, each KiwiCo project brings a sense of pride and accomplishment that fuels creative confidence for ongoing experimentation. And here's the best part. KiwiCo does the legwork for you. Mm -hmm. So you can spend quality time tackling projects together. No commitment required. Pause or cancel anytime. KiwiCo, where serious fun and learning go hand in hand. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills. With KiwiCo, get 50% off your first month, plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash TMOS. That's 50% off your first month at KI. W-I-C-O dot com slash T-M-O-S. All right, Oscar, it's time. It's time for the fantastic, uh, great review of... This has been the most ex the amazing experience. <laughs> the most amazing experience of my life. Do you bet he likes the Transformer movies? Oh, I bet he does. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think he's a big movie guy. I think he just likes looking don't at the mirror. Don't sully my review. Well, I won't. Numb. I apologize. Let's no. get right to yeah, it. Transformers away. Rise of the Beasts finally came out this past weekend i usually miss uh opening weekend simply because my wife hates movies this time i said i won't let her stop me i won't let her ruin my fun i went to the the what i call the apex creep hour of viewings which is 11 a.m when there's usually kids everywhere and watch on saturday on a saturday watch the movie by myself oh kids now was it a sunny nice day out it was Saturday was a gorgeous day. Gorgeous. Yes. Perfect. Do you play right. soccer anymore on your Saturdays? No, I don't. I used to play okay. on Sundays and uh, that league got shut down and they're gone. So, okay. I'd love I'm to sorry. join another league. Feel free to reach out. Wasn't it they found out that the league was a front for meth? No, no, no. I, we'd I be much, we'd all be like much that. faster if that was the case. <laughs> league front for meth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> drug deals on this. How, what, uh, what was the title of this one? It's Rise of the Beasts, Mike. Okay. And I, when one I. One beast or multiple beasts? Multiple beasts. Okay. I came in with low expectations. Why? I was dreading it because, you know, I just, I remember the age of extinction. Do you know how it's insincere he just was with that why? Like, of course, why? Uh, yeah. Are you, you think the franchise is tired? Is that why? Well, the standalones, like the Bumblebee film, that made sense to me. But the, the big dogs with Mark Wahlberg and the age of extin extinction and all of these, uh, you know, the realm of the nights, all of that garbage I didn't get into. It just didn't make sense. How many total would you sort of ballpark it? How many Transformers themed feature films have there been? I this maybe seven. Okay, right, That's a lot. So seven, yeah. maybe maybe eight. Worst case scenario, less than ten. Mm -hmm. um, Good and, observation, Rob. And I I walked in. I said, "Thank you, Mike. Don't get excited. This is going to be garbage." I, I I didn't even look at any reviews. I was like, "This is going to be garbage." Move in. Uh, pay. Did you? But do you kind of dig the fact that it's garbage? No, I don't dig that. I it like to garbage. actually. I like to be entertained. Yeah, but it is your garbage. Doesn't matter. I I, I have the last two um, movies outside of uh, Bumblebee. Yes, which is a standalone origin story. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't go be into into the theaters because it looked like garbage. This was a little confusing, but intriguing enough for me to go. And I went. I was 
pleasantly surprised at the theater at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. Nice day out, summer. Empty. Mind you. Except, ch- for, one, except for one guy. There were I'm seven. Over here now. <laughs> there were seven single dudes my age. Pumblebee. In the oh. entire theater. This was also a theater without reclining seats. Oh, it was so a real theater. It was, it was in a nice theater, but this is probably their dumpiest of the theaters okay. inside. Okay. All right. So it wasn't one of those like, uh, you know, have your uh, nachos no. and sandwich and kick no, your heels no. back. There they, was no massaging of your legs n- during the theater? None of that. No. Uh, that was, that was, the, it was a $30 ticket. I went for the $20 ticket. Attaboy. And I sat there and I watched it in IMAX. And Mike, when I tell you. This is a two thumbs up from Santana. They're back, baby. This, if you're wondering where in the storyline, this is essentially a prequel. After it follows after Bumblebee for you Transformers aficionados, goes right into Bumblebee was the Camaro, right? Yes, yellow and okay. black. Goes right into the early years of the Transformers being stuck on Earth and not being able to get to Cybertron. Was Optimus Prime in he it? He was in it. Um, I also tugged at my heartstrings as. Was uh, Jennifer Coolidge in it? She was not in it. Oh. They filmed a part of this in Latin America and South America, which wow. was cool to see, right? And the Incan temples. Uh, Did and, the temples transform? No. Oh. And then I, for, there, are, there are five people listening right now. Uh, but the, uh, I have a, just a quick anecdote. Uh, two years ago, around this time, I was in, um, in Utah, and I was visiting Reed Galen. Uh, we're setting up his home studio. Right. And I had, I think... 36 hours there yeah so we had wrapped we, we were setting up the day he goes what's the plan today and i said oh we're gonna set up this thing at your house blah, blah blah and at night if you want the new transformers films coming out do you want to go see it with me like just because i knew his family was out of town oh just, is reed a did you suggest it or i suge- i suggested this to reed oh, and he looked at me like i just spit in his face yeah and said absolutely not <laughs> What the hell were I? This is why you got to love him. This is why you got to love his inner child. Yeah. This is why you got to love that Bolivian immigrant boy yeah. that comes out and thinks that that movie, that that franchise is the real thing. That's you love Hollywood it. showbiz. I, you know yeah. what's great? You know what's great? Consistency is great. <laughs> and you are consistent in your love for that franchise. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing, I'm authentic with my love for the franchise. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You loved it. So you were yes. in your happy place. Did yes. you get a snack of any kind? Yes, I bought some All nachos right. and and I and a big soda. It was just me. And, and he transformed I, those. When Mike. I tell you, Mike, <laughs> the soundtrack is great. Some the like original, like true hip hop, 90s yep. hits. Wonderful. Is it Nas on it? Yeah, it just yes, like every big De La Soul, Biggie, Wu Tang Clan. Just it's it's fun, and is it loud? It's it's just it reminded me of what it was like to be back at the movies again. Which All right, is good. Cool. Oh, that's good. good. Yeah, that's I can a, buy that. You know what? Yeah. That's a ten. Oscar gives it a ten mm-hmm. for those people out there that dig that type of thing. Go out and see it. Enjoy. That's a rave mm-hmm. review. Uh, you know, uh, Reed Galen. Thank you. Yes, you said yes. I, I'm not sure we would have had yeah, you on the show. It's been weird, again. right? Yeah, yeah we would have probably uh, skipped it. Uh, <laughs> all right, we got a couple of things coming up. How is that for a tease? I love it. And two things. Two things are coming up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, hey, you know what? Whether your shaving ritual is minimal or elevated, level up your game with Harry's sleekest razor yet. It's the craft handle. Experience the latest and greatest in the Harry's Razor lineup, delivered straight to your door for just 10 bucks by visiting harrys.com slash TMOS. It includes a craft handle, five-blade German-engineered razor cartridge, shaving gel, and travel cover. Plus, you can schedule replacement blade delivery whenever you need them with refills as low as $2. Plus, you can step up your routine with dozens of affordable items to choose from, like shaving creams, post-shave balm, body washes, hydrating lotions, and more. I love them all. I've talked about them all. Elevate your shave with the latest and greatest in Harry's Razor Handle lineup. Today, get your $17 Craft Handle Starter Set. If you've never tried Harry's before, this is going to be perfect for you. Get it for just $10 at harrys.com slash TMOS, and you'll find out what we've known known for a long time. Harry's is fantastic. harrys.com slash TMOS. T-M-O-S. All right, real quick time for a very, very quick break here. All right. Uh, Rob Spiewak, you wanted to mention 
uh, that there is a new face in podcasting. And then I want to tell you about the Carla O'Mara quote of the week. All right. Two treats in one. Take it away, Rob Spiewak. Mike, if I say to you the name Anna Sorokin or Sorokin, does that mean anything to you? Yeah, Anna Delvey. The, exactly, uh, from the show Inventing Anna. Inventing Anna, yeah, that's it. You're very poor. You're she's poor. Out. It was fantastic. <laughs> she's out of jail. She's on 24-7 house arrest, and she's launching a podcast. I've been planning to um, do my own podcast for a while. Um, I think I wanted to start recording in jail, actually, over the jail phone. That's um, her. Yes. Know, like, there are some Stop the presses. Who record whole album. Who's the uh, the who's the uh, oh god Garner uh, Ozark um, Julia Garner Julia Garner mm -hmm. is yeah. it Julia Garner? It's the same voice. Same voice. My numbing yeah. God, that's fantastic! I just love that. That's I knew really you. Special. I knew you would like this. All right, back oh, to that's Anna. Great. Anna Delvey, right here. I've been planning to um, do my own podcast for a while. Um, Podcast. I think I wanted to start recording in jail, actually, over the jail phone. Um, because, you know, like there are some rappers who record whole albums um, from being incarcerated, while being incarcerated. Be I was like, why not record a podcast? But then I got released. I think that a lot of people have all these misconceptions and they only uh, know like this caricature from the media. And I mean, I can't blame them. It's like if it gets repeated enough I, times, you just kind of can't help but kind of ingrain that. I'm on 24 seven house arrest. I'm only allowed to leave for um, my parole check-ins, my ICE check-ins and for medical emergencies. For whoever watched the Netflix series, the story is being told from the journalist perspective, like not even from mine. I feel like just so many people um, put so many stories out there. And just because I was in jail, I didn't always have um, a chance to like comment and respond. So look at things, it's not really my perspective. It's what it's other people's perception of what really happened. I, I think it's, it's gonna, up to I, me. I, I, okay, yeah, okay, we go. get it, we get it. It's going to be huge. Yep. She it's says the huge. theme of her podcast, Mike, is productive rule breaking. All right. She is close enough to the to the smash hit, right? Yeah. She's just in time, right? I if believe she's so. Waited longer. What do you I'm, think, Oz? The grift. It's 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 obvious. Well, it's another grift. Yeah, true. Well, of course, it's, true. It, and the way that she even said, "I, I love watching I, the grift happen." I couldn't respond because I was in jail. Like she's the victim. Yeah, she was in jail because yeah. she stole from people. Yeah. Two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. She grifted. Yeah. What makes it special? Yeah, you know, we ought to do a companion podcast to it. You know, in, uh, inventing uh, pony. No, dissecting Anna. Oh, okay. Oh, dissecting Anna. Dissecting Anna. We should we should have a companion podcast yes. to this show. What about what about where we yes delving into Anna? Delving into Delvey. <laughs> like it even better. Right. Uh, and last D thing, N D. We we have uh, we're up. Uh, on a, but, but don't you think we could? I mean, it, oh really, yeah. To me, it'll be fascinating we, to watch. We, her. Yeah, I. I this is what it will be I'm, interesting to see. Go ahead, I'm sorry. First, if her, if her production quality goes up, because it sounds like she was in a Don's Jones um, with the Echo. The other is... Reach out, Oscar. How is she going to... Like, how... What is she going to do with her life now? Like, I don't even know what the Oscar, possibilities I don't are. understand why you're so continuously negative. She's going to do a podcast. I don't know why. It sounds like you're protesting too much. Perhaps you're afraid of Anna Delvey. I will I listen, know. and I bet any money that it pisses me off somehow. Because well, it is going to be such an obvious grift. Well, uh, look at this. Your media members, of course you're going to uh, take a negative look at it, like most journalists. Are you a victim? I am not. I never said that I was a victim. I said that I'm going to set the record straight on things that have been confusing. You see... <laughs> I know that's one of you, of the three of you, is someone who cares about truth, and that is Mike O'Mara. That is why I believe he will understand me, because I've heard a lot of people talk about Mike, and Mike is my man all the way. There you are. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Very, Thank very you. kind of you. Best I think he has, she has a business opportunity for yeah, Mike. Yeah, there you go. She has a business opportunity. <laughs> Sports club. I, like a lot of women that I know, as a matter of fact, one woman once said to me. Mike is very, very, very attractive. Thank you. That's uh, one God, of the God. weirdest tapes oh, you have. Yeah, you have I a forgot. thing. Yeah. yeah, I got the thing. All right, Carla's quote of the week. Wrote it down. Uh, I hate Father's Day. Oh. Thanks, Carla. That's all. No explanation necessary. Mm. Just, uh, you know, looking forward to a really good week.
Yes, sir. Very, very exciting. Yeah, I hate Father's Day. Thanks, honey. Appreciate that. Is there anything that billboards the lack of uh, anything substantial coming my way? Yeah. Well, maybe absolutely. it has to do with her. Could be. Yeah. Who knows? Made me sick. <laughs> we'll be right back. Father's Day is approaching, and it's yes. time to surprise your pop <laughs> with one of Mike's signature beauty packages. Eh, if you want to. <laughs> Why? Glow. Come on. Derm Glow, Derm Glow. Get ready to make him smile with either the big or little package, both on sale. Ladies, we haven't forgotten about you either. Carla's Beauty Bundle is also on sale, so it's your chance to indulge. With Derm Glow, you can expect fast shipping and worldwide delivery everywhere. Uh, they even offer afterplay. I'm sorry, after play. Oh, what is the other thing? <laughs> hey, how about a little after play, huh? <laughs> Look at a little after play after your facial? No, stop that. <laughs> My greatest fear realized. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey. Hey, where are you, Derm Glow? I'm over here now. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> discover the power of virtual skin consultations to enhance your loveliness. Don't miss out on these amazing deals. Visit dermglowskin.com today and shop for incredible offers that will brighten anyone's day, including yours. Derm Glow Skin, the ultimate facial boutique featuring facials and products by the pampering esthetician. Reach out today and tell them that Lil Bow Wow sent you. Very good. Nice. Hello. <laughs> Lil Bow Wow. Uh, Lil Mike, Bow wow. Uh, some yes. people are getting ready to fly because you know what? It's summertime. Mm -hmm. Vacations are upon us. And you just want to be sober when you're on the plane. Lest you get removed like this Southwest passenger. Oh, my God. Um, she is uh, she's not handling it well. Now, to be fair, before this removal happened, they asked her nicely to leave before they forcibly removed her in handcuffs. 11.30 p.m. when I paid for my flight. Oh, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She's in handcuffs now. Can I please have my phone? We got it. Oh, no, you're making it worse. No, I literally stop. need my phone. Just I paid for right. right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Can you please get my phone? Yeah. Yeah. I am there. so confused I what's happening. That's all right. Sir, I am so confused what's happening. Nerd cop. I'm literally so confused what's happening. Yeah, well, we're not. What's happening? Can you explain to me? Looks like you're getting under arrest. What's happening? Why? Looks like you're getting arrest. Why? Arrest the people in right. Southwest. I know. They are so displeased. You're under arrest, lady. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Get out of here. We're not yeah. confused what's happening. You're out of I always control. Wish that, when I watch those tapes, I always wish they wait till the very end when the plane applauds, when they carry her off. Yes. That's always my favorite part. I like you know, that. Like, I like that. Yay! Meanwhile, Please Mike, go. things are troubled in Ohio. Because a neighborhood has an infestation. Oh, by the way, did you see the bees in Times Square? I did not see the bees in Times Square, but tomorrow we have a lot to talk about because not only the bees in Times Square, but I-95 in Philadelphia. What mm. the Crumbled. F is yeah. that? Not yeah, okay. Pretty incredible. But uh, in Ohio, it's not bees or crumbling roads. It's groundhogs. Any little hole, like see up under that yeah. stair, they'll crawl up under there and have more babies and migrate. You know, you got one, now you got... Hey, it's disgusting. They come around here digging up holes. You know what I mean? Like, ew. But the groundhog problem is just insane. It costs like $150 just to set this trap up. And then for every one he caught, it was $60. It's financially bracing, Mike, when you're infested with groundhogs. Oh. Hey, somebody called for an exterminator? Oh, it's Carl Spackler. <laughs> hey. I can help you find a place when I know your location. In Security and Privacy Settings, choose the Privacy tab. Under Location Services, check Enable Location Services and Siri and Dictation. Did you bring your girlfriend, Carl? <laughs> what the hell happened to my computer? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that was the weirdest thing I ever heard. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I got to get out of here. Oh, good to see care. you. Go get the gophers and the ground See you, Mrs. Craig. All right. Do you remember the backward singer guy? Yeah. I love oh, you, this. God, you, God, you mm -hmm. love this. I do, because I like when you guys guess the song. All right. Okay, so it's going to play the song. He's going like to sing it. it. Okay, let's I move like on. It. No, no, I like no, it. No, I like it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go All right. Ahead. Uh, he's going to sing the song literally backwards, then reverse it, and it will be the song. Stairway okay? to Heaven. No, Mike, that's incorrect. See All if right. you can guess this song. <laughs> Yark, 
Any guesses? Oh no, it's like an Ed Sheeran song. This one really brought me great joy. I got it. What is it? Pour some sugar on me. Sorry, it's. It's Rick Astley. See, Mike, that was worth it, wasn't it? Uh, I, I absolutely. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oscar sent me this with little explanation, but I feel I should play it because the more I watched it, the more entertained I was. It's a ring door cam, mm-hmm. and it's at night, and a little kid, probably eight years old, runs up and talks to it before his dad even gets there. Okay, may I get may, a little yeah, setup, please, right? Please, please, uh, please. I, I took a deeper dive. Apparently, uh, his, this, this, the, his uncle, which is the house that this little kid's running up okay. to, just went through a breakup, and on the car ride over, the little kid heard the father and the mother talking about the breakup. Of so, the uncle. Of the uncle. So okay. he runs up to the ring doorbell. You see the father in the distance walking up with a yeah. bunch of bags. Yeah. And then this is what happens. The kid this says, is at the uncle's house. Yes, yeah, hits and, the ring doorbell. And the kid runs. He can't. He's really at the top speed and runs up and says, Tommy, she left you because you're kind of ugly and you don't make that much money. She was way out of your league. What are you saying? I was trying to cheer him up and say that there's more fish in the sea. Oh, okay. Did, did you knock yet? No. <laughs> did you knock did, yet? Did, was the kid just effing with him? He's trolling his uncle. Yeah. Oh my god, the kid is a little bitty and he's trolling his <laughs> own and obvious, uncle. And obviously, here's the thing that I got from it. That's like the omen. That that kid ought to be like <laughs> knocking people off a chair on a on a tricycle that, and killing them. But my isn't god. it? But that, that has to be all things that were said in the car right yeah, on the way over. It doesn't up. matter. The kid having the wherewithal to do that. Put the kid on an altar somewhere. My <laughs> god. Can you play that again? Of course. Here we go. Tommy, she left you because you're kind of ugly and you don't make that much money. She was way out of your league. <laughs> what are you saying? I tried to cheer him up and say that there's more fish in this. Listen to the evil. Oh, okay. I know. Listen no. to the evil. <laughs> Did you knock yet? One more time, please. Okay. All right. One more time. Tommy, she left you because you're kind of ugly and you don't make that much money. <laughs> she was way out of your league. What are you saying? I was trying to cheer him up and say that there's more fish in the Just my thing here. Oh, okay. Did, did you knock yet? No. <laughs> just trying to cheer him up. There's more oh, fish in the sea. Right. That is so funny. And then he says, I'm just trying to cheer him up. <laughs> 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 Evil, that name is that kid. <laughs> All right, Mike, here's another reason to not go jogging. In Colorado, cows attacked a jogger. And a, repres- a, a, a witness called in. And what's funny is at the very front of this call, you can hear a cow, and that's my favorite part. It goes like this. Hi, I am on a trail right next to McCaslin. I just saw a runner get attacked by a herd of cows, and they're not moving, and the cows are shredding them. She screamed and was just down on the ground while they were just <laughs> trampling her. On a very oh. short span of time, she stopped moving, which at wow. the time, I was like, oh my gosh, did I just watch? You know, did I just watch her die? Which thankfully wasn't the case. When trail visitors come out and they're acting aggressively or if they're approaching the cow in a fast manner those cows again perceive that as a threat and they do what they do to protect their young mike do not be aggressive towards the I cow never knew that. i don't think it was that big a deal i think she was milking it ah! <laughs> <laughs> let's close with this <laughs> yes sir. yes sir. Uh, today I'm is now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> today go. is superman day Oh, Oh, it is. Yes. And to observe it, here's a comic named uh, Jordan Rubin talking about suspension of disbelief in Superman movies. There's a scene in Superman Returns where Superman gets shot in the face at point blank range. The bullet bounces off his eye. The guy sitting next to me in the theater goes, yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Like like that's where it all came apart for him, right? He's sitting there the whole movie like... I could see this guy flying around. And I could see him being from Krypton. A bullet off the eye. No way. Come on. You ain't fooling me, Hollywood. (laughs) Mike, that's all I got today. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, We got to get out of here. We'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Now, listen. Don't forget, we told you today, they just started TMOS Fruit Cake 
futures. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com to get them. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeOmeraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You are unstoppable. See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions, and then you got to go into somebody dying. I want you to start absorbing what I'm saying to you. You just want to talk. I'm not your psychiatrist. Let me ask you something. Was Mary a little big bone back in high school? You know, I don't want to bring this up, but you've been treating a lot of people with a lot of disrespect, even your own wife. Oh, you're starting right in, huh? Starting right in with the insults. No warming up in a bullpen or not, man. That's what that is, man. I'm telling you. Goodbye.